wear headphones. I still don't know if I should wear... I just wear the headphones because I'm so loud. Because it, it might look nice with your hair. It just... It never looks cool with my hair. I never... I always look... Um, it never, like, improves the look. But sometimes I feel like I can tease it up. Why do you wear the headphones just to make it look like you're important? <laughs> <laughs> basically Official. it makes me look like i have some authority around yeah. here or something i You're like people want to hear me <laughs> make sure my voice is right it makes me feel like i know what i'm doing yeah but i don't <laughs> i don't even think it's, it's like it a, your official start that's right it's like <laughs> it makes me just feel like we're making a show yeah and things are on right because i can hear myself but i also feel like i yell and this makes i this magnifies how loud I am, so it makes me talk a little less. That's so weird. I think if you wore headphones, you'd talk louder. Really? Yeah. Have you ever noticed when people um, talk into their phones, they talk louder? And you're like, it's not a... Oh. You're like, hey! What? And you're like, why are you yelling into the uh, phone? Yeah. There's some sort of thing where you think you have to yell. I don't know what it is. It's like a weird like audio dyslexia or something. But I'm too loud, and I'm trying to talk softer and be sexual. <laughs> Well, <laughs> and attractive to men. Well, <laughs> I have a third child, so I'm always yelling because I just think no one hears me. I know. Oh, that's <laughs> no one's listening. I was not heard as a child. That's yeah. exactly what I tell people. Yeah. And I also repeat myself a lot. Oh, yeah. Because when I was a kid, I had to say something four times in order to get heard. But it also makes me feel really uncomfortable when, like, the table goes silent and people are actually hearing me. I'm like, no, this is not how life's supposed to work. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm used to being completely ignored yeah. and disregarded. <laughs> um good guys let's go oh we're ready yeah okay <clears throat> kate upton is well we started right yeah i never know when we started <laughs> um do you remember how we met i actually i actually don't <laughs> that I'm is like, so mean no i no i'm sure it was like really great um <laughs> <laughs> wait was it did did ben bruno introduce us nope. no okay nope Keep trying. <laughs> Keep guessing. Uh, I don't remember. We met. First of all, I think people will probably be surprised to know that we're real friends. I don't think people know we're friends. Oh, uh, yeah. We're friends, right? We're, like, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? No, yeah, we're friends. <laughs> we're real friends. We met at the Vanity Fair party. With Leslie? Yes. I, I feel like we knew each other before that, but no, that was our meeting. I think when we met, it, we were like, oh, we know each other. Yeah, that makes sense because I was drinking too, so yes, that I don't right. really fully remember meeting you. You definitely were drinking. Yeah. I, so I don't expect you to remember that. <laughs> um, but we met at the Vanity Fair party, and I remember I was so out of it because that party, for people that don't know, it's like the biggest party basically of the year. Yeah. In Hollywood. And it is a shit show. Oh, nightmare. A nightmare. <laughs> you can barely walk through anywhere. And everyone is like an icon. Yeah. And so no shoving. There's no elbows. <laughs> You're you not, can't you throw can't throw an elbow. I'm the most important person yeah. here. Just like, that's De Niro. That's yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, I have to be on my best behavior in like nine pairs of spanks. Like, can't breathe. Yeah. I have to fart so bad. And well, no one would no one would know it was you if you <laughs> farted because it's so tight. <laughs> if you like to Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah. just rip, rip a vegan fart. <laughs> and I was spinning out because that red carpet is, it's like a, a hundred yards long and there's what like a thousand photographers yeah it is so crazy and i always have anhedonia like right as i'm going down and i because i always bomb the red carpet i'm never good at it i don't know what to do with my hands well it's also that red carpet because most um actors are short that all those photographers shoot from a bad angle for tall people. So we're really screwed. So maybe it's not you bombing. Maybe it's the photographer bombing. You're blowing my mind. Because I'm like, why are all my red carpet photos all nostril? Yeah. So any, literally, they're coming up at you because they're trying to make the actors and actresses look taller. But we're already tall. So they just, like, crop us at the head. I didn't even think of yeah. that. Because they're on, like, scaffolding. They're on, like, yeah. benches. And they're designed for all the actors that are, like, 5'2". Exactly. Trying to make them look statuesque. But actual people that are tall just look like they have six chins exactly that's why you just got to keep your head real low <laughs> how do you know what to do you you do like on the red carpet you know what to do with your hips you know what to do with your hands so weird like it's a lot of people have taken my picture <laughs> <laughs> i learned what to do in front of a camera you don't say <laughs> no but like the, i remember the first time i went to vanity fair i like freaked out i was like why do i look so terrible or like, there's like one photo that's good and then i figured out it's 
the difference between Hollywood or like any fashion party, they're shooting you better because they're used to all the tall models. Oh, that's so interesting. And I always panic because you know what? I have a flashback to school photo day. Ugh. Remember when you had to like wait in line to take one photo and you had one shot. Yeah. If you if you blinked or if you had braces, you had to wait till next October for yep. your next photo. And I'm always like, gotta get this right. And I get so anxious of getting it right that I scrunch up my face. And then and they start yelling at you. They C- yell at you. You can't please everyone. They heckle you. Yeah. And they always go, turn around. Yeah. And, and, and it's a trick. And I'll turn around and do my corny, like, Olin Mills thing. I'm like, why am I listening to you? Or they'll be like, blow a kiss. You're like, no. 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 They, they try to trap you yeah. into doing something in there. It's that awkward, like, you're blowing a kiss to no one. No one. So dumb. Um, I remember uh, I heard uh, uh, a friend of mine, Styles Jennifer Lopez, and said that she looks down until she's ready so they can't get a photo. She just looks at the ground. So Maybe that works for her. Like she probably has like three bodyguards around her. It, with <laughs> us, it would just be like, are they looking at their breasts? <laughs> Did Kate like, just fall asleep? <laughs> like, is she asleep? Kate, is something wrong? Kate, Kate ogles herself. Yeah. <laughs> She loves just looking at her boobs. Yeah, she's like, I'm not ready yet. And like, she has like a, a a wall of humans that are blocking her from getting her photo. But I didn't even think of that. <laughs> us, they'd be like, I think like something's wrong. It's like 17 pins. <laughs> Does she have mono? What's not now. <laughs> not now. That's true with us. They'd be like, God, Whitney's such a bitch. Yeah, they, they like that would be the photo everywhere. I didn't even think of that. Like bending over, seeing all my gray hairs yeah. up here like a bald spot. <laughs> I always have to do like the boob check before I go on the red carpet. And I, I, that's what I do. I'm like, get really close to me. So all like the people, pe- a human wall to yeah. guard me so I can. To get, but you have like a, like a whole plan before you go out there. I, I don't know if I have a plan, but I just like what s- pose looks best with this dress and doesn't make me look fat. Yeah, I, I would say half the people on social media that aren't in our business are better at posing than Way I better. at this point. I know. <laughs> I'm like, this girl I went to college with in Tallahassee really nailed it. Like, can you <laughs> <Yeah>. help me? <laughs> like, <laughs> please help me. <laughs> um, but uh, that party was was crazy because I always get seated I, looking back. Like, there's all these seating charts and you go in and you learn like your place in the business. Mm-hmm. You learn your stuff. Like, you go to these parties and there's also a time they give you. At yes. the Vanity Fair party, you get a t- you have to show up at a certain time, and the time is the first indicator of what your value is in the business. <laughs> and then you get seated next to certain people. I was seated next to Brett Ratner. They always put me next to the perverts. <laughs> they're, they're like, she can handle it. <laughs> like, um, but I think the cool person at my table was Judd Apatow. Yeah, and then I think maybe that's how I met you. Yeah. Yes, I, yeah, I, you know, love to third wheel with Jenna. <laughs> that's right, like, that's right. And I remember when I met you being annoyed because I was like, oh, I love her and I'm, <laughs> I don't have room for more friends. I remember going like, no, the answer is no, you're not, you can't do this. Like you can't, you're no new applications, no new friends. I can't see the ones I had. And then I was just like, fuck, she's so like funny and cool. And I guess we have to be friends. And I also loved you because you, this word gets thrown around a lot, but you really were like a girl's girl to me. Like yeah. a lot of people go to that party and they're trying to like get the producers to think a certain thing or like you were just there to like have a good time and you were just like hanging out with girls and like getting drunk on the balcony. And I was like, she's awesome. <laughs> That's probably why I don't have any movies coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why you're doing my podcast. Yeah, I, <laughs> um, <Topanga Canyon. laughs> no, um, no. I mean, I love girlfriends. I think it's so important. I, I, you know, have two sisters. Strong. I love mother. you and your sister. I've got to spend time uh, with you and your sister, and you're so cute together. I know. They're, uh, yeah, my sister's like my lifeline. Um, she's my forced best friend. But yeah, I just, you know, you re- raised in a family full of women. Like mm-hmm. you know the value of women friendship yeah you're so you're so good at them and um and we've got to and you're also a really good friend because i think i'm learning as an adult the best friends in your life are the ones that you can like not see for a couple months and when you see each other you pick right back up yeah i mean when you have like 
friends that are everywhere, you just yeah. get used. You have to have that. It's too exhausting yeah. to like start from the beginning. Yeah. After you haven't seen someone in a while, and to not like keep score and be like, "How right. come you're? Where are you? I haven't seen you. Hey, stranger!" Like yeah. that kind of passive aggressive stuff. When friends, you know, keep a score sheet, that is just gets so frustrating. Yeah. Because you get older. I so agree. You just want to have a good time. You also cracked me up one time. We were having dinner before one of these big Hollywood parties, which I think they're called parties. They shouldn't be called parties. They're auditions. Yeah. They're always auditions. They're always, it's like, I'm always like, I feel like I'm being judged at these parties because I was being judged. I did. Yes. I was like, oh, I'm going to go party. It's all the people that could employ you. And but they never like employ you from that party because they're all drunk, mm-hmm. just wanting a night away. It's ju- it really is just to see how you're, up keeping yourself. Yeah. You said something you probably don't even remember. This is after you got married and you were going to some one of these like Golden Globes parties and I was like, oh God, I just can't do it this year. And you went, oh, I'm only going to let them know I'm not pregnant. Oh yeah, because as soon as you get married, <laughs> everyone's like, oh, she wants that white picket fence life. Guess she's not working anymore. Probably pregnant. Like you were like, I'm just showing up to let people know that you can get married and not be pregnant. Yeah. And then you go, and pregnant. then I got pregnant. <laughs> Like, like literally two months later. Literally. <laughs> but, oh my, oh, oops. <laughs> and uh, and I just was like, oh yeah, that's what you do. You just go to these parties to let people know, like I'm available. I cut my hair. Yeah. <laughs> I can play the best friend in your movie. Like, <laughs> exactly. You're just going to like check in. Mm-hmm. I remember I was with a, a director once, um, and we were at some premiere, and a famous actress ran up to him and just went, "Hey, how are you? So good to see you!" And ran off. And he went, "She wanted me to know she lost her baby weight." And I'm, literally that's what he said he's gay so maybe it's not as as shallow but uh and he's like now i know like she's she's back she's back it's brutal i mean it's brutal it's savage brutal. god i gotta go to those, those parties <laughs> lost the baby wait i think um i also have a story about you that you probably don't know before i met you i was dating someone it was a very unhealthy relationship anyway um, I don't know if you know, but I've been in a couple of those. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> and I was probably 28, is my guess. Um, doesn't excuse my behavior. <laughs> Still too old to behave this way. It was just a really unhealthy relationship. And you know those like toxic relationships who were kind of in, in our 20s where everything was a thing. And it was before I understood that you can be in a relationship with someone and it's actually healthy for the person you're with to be able to like say, oh, yeah, that girl's pretty. Or you don't have to be, cr- you know ridiculous about it but i know you look at other women yeah i know that it'd be weird to not think a pretty girl is pretty and if you and we do it with we do it with guys yeah and And we we do do it with women women. yeah it's human nature exactly why are we all pretending that we have blinders and and it's that it doesn't have to be a sexual thing it can also just be an appreciation like also i feel like with other women you know they they put in time like notice it (laughs) that's such a great way to put it i've never thought of it that way but this is when you were just getting really famous, and I think it was a Vanity Fair cover, maybe, and, and you were on the cover, and everybody was talking about you and your body. It was just like you were having that, that huge sort of, like, introductory moment. Yeah. And you were on the cover of Vanity Fair, and the guy I was with at the time, he just looks at me, he goes, see, that's what men want. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that we don't that's what we want they finally figured it out the yeah, va- a picture on a magazine who doesn't speak <laughs> <laughs> just one photo I remember, I remember going to him like but she doesn't want you you, I, I, you know when you just get jealous and i just was like but y- you're not she's not in the running for you <laughs> like i it was this thing where i was like but she's not available to you why like i just we've all done that like child immature thing but it was his way of just saying like why has fashion only put anorexic people on covers of magazines for so long guys aren't into that you know and that's what we want and women aren't into that either like the marketing's telling us that we're into that but we're not like we want i mean i i know i did i wanted to appreciate my body and just be as fit as i could be like no one wants to walk in a room and feel less than Mm -hmm. than somebody in your image that's perfect because they're anorexic or just naturally super thin so i think it's important that we're all just the best version of ourselves and we can appreciate each other's bodies and differences did that feel like did you know that you were walking into being like a body like positivity progress icon when all that was happening no (laughs) (laughs) i had no idea um yeah no i worked really really hard to 
be super thin at the beginning of my career because that's what, you know, I was a working model and I was successful working model. And then I got these awesome opportunities and I didn't know that I was considered (laughs) fat until like the media (laughs) told me, girl, you're fat. And I was like, wait, what? (laughs) Why have I been starving myself then if I'm already fat? (laughs) Um, So I had like, I went on a real journey of like finding um, how to appreciate my body and my differences and what that meant to me personally. And then, um, all while, all while being in the spotlight and people pushing me to be the leader in this movement. Um, because you were a two instead of a zero. Yeah, literally. I mean, literally. (laughs) Um, but yeah, no. And then, but I feel like as I was talking about it, I was also working through it. And I think that that's why it it came up as authentic as it was Mm -hmm. like as I was trying to figure out my place and how I felt about being judged for my body realizing I don't I don't give a shit what people say about my body because this is my body Mm -hmm. and taking care of it puts me in a confident mental position to take that stand like I know I fueled my body properly and I worked out and I did enjoy that chocolate and I don't really care if you say I shouldn't have had it because I did and I feel good about myself yeah I mean, it's just been, it's, it's been so, I do think it was like such a big, it started such a big thing. I yeah. mean, when I think about these conversations that people are having and how ad campaigns are changing mm-hmm. and how um, sizing is changing for lots of brands, I mean, that is kind of when it started in a way, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how I guess the conversation started. And um, I mean, obviously people wanted it. Mm-hmm. That's why the conversation started. It wasn't because you know, I was there. It was because people were yearning for any differences. Yeah. And at the time I started modeling, it was, you know, no one had the voice to say what they wanted because there was no social media. Now people can say, no, 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 I want to be represented. This is what I want. So only designers were leading that charge. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we want something different. Someone who looks perfect, but like an alien. That's literally (laughs) what they would say. (laughs) And um, in ha- like meanings, they, yeah, they wanted the perfect features, but put together in, in a, an alien like way. So like the perfect big eyes, the perfect big lips, but not put together right. This is alarming. Yeah. A lot of people don't even know about how why models uh, are they it, this started in uh, during World War Two. I actually weirdly wrote a paper on this. <laughs> I was in college about where because I struggled with eating stuff for so long mm-hmm. and I think I got obsessed with yeah. the origin of where this super th- impossibly thin body type came from and it came from a shortage of fabric in the 50s <laughs> when Stop. yeah when World War II happened basically the designers were like well we don't have enough fabric so we'll just make them smaller and smaller and it wasn't supposed to stay like that it was just essentially how um, they coped with a shortage of fabric in the 50s Benton are you nodding uh, yeah Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and then it just kind of stuck. And that just became the standard of beauty from just an accident. And also Marilyn Monroe was also thin. That's the other thing. She, literally. <laughs> People are like, well, Marilyn Monroe body type. I'm like, she was an eight. She well, would have been an eight. Today. Oh, yeah. They were like, no, even smaller. They're like, she's a size 12. But it, the sizing was different back then. She was a two four. Wild. Wild. It was just different sizing. It's like in the UK. The, it was similar sizing to that. Right, because a two here is like an eight, eight there, there or something yeah. like that. Do you get sick of talking about it? About my body? Yeah. I mean, I think yes and no. I get really sick about talking about it with like guys in creepy ways. But in this way, no. Yeah. I could talk about it all day because yeah. I want to spread a positive message for other women. I think we all should own our bodies and feel good about talking about it in ways that we we own yeah. and we feel proud of but um i guess i get sick of of marketing i'm yeah. like why are you guys talking about it like that yeah like come on just don't make it a thing just hire the right person no matter their body type or represent different people and don't do it just as a trendy thing do it as something that's going to stay i'm trying to think if i knew you before you and your husband started dating i feel like i did and I'm fascinated because I'm like, well, I don't even remember meeting. So. <laughs> <laughs> what a black hat. So I'm like, you, you tell me. You were getting, you're getting roofied a lot back then. Yeah. So who knows? Woo! What was Apparently, I was sitting by Brett Ratner too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and because uh, I, re- I I love your relationship because. It's weird when you see a friend with somebody and you just know, like, oh, that's the person they're going to marry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, I feel like you always know before your friend knows. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah. You just feel it. You just feel it. And you're like, she might not even know this yet, but they're for sure this is going to happen. Yeah. Like, I just know it. And this is, I've seen my friend before this person. I've seen my friend during this person. And this is the best version of her. Yeah. And you also, like, when you met Justin... You created a friendship with him right away too. I, well, I love him. I, I love. I love him. I, 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 him, and I just get along really well, and I don't know why. Yeah, I, I don't know why. He's very. He, he kind of is like. He's very funny yeah. and and clear, and maybe all great athletes, I think, have to be this. Like, I, he's very clear. He's very honest with himself. He's very self aware. Yeah, and he fucking calls it like he sees it. Yes, and I just love that kind of personality. Yeah, me too. Because you know where you stand. Yep, it's no bullshit. You can just have fun with them. But I do remember going like, "This is going to be a rough road." Like they're two very strong personalities. Yes. <laughs> That's weird you say that. My mom said the same thing. <laughs> like I'm very curious to see how these arguments go because both people are probably very good at winning. I Justin's not someone that likes to lose. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I would imagine. And I remember you said something um, where you were like, we're, what is it called? A power struggle? Yes. Yeah. The power struggle face. What is that? When in a relationship does that happen? Um, it can. I mean, I guess it's just different for mm-hmm. any relationship. I think it's like from the very beginning, like two or three months to two years or something. Oh, interesting. Um, but yeah, it's just the. It's the phase after the honeymoon phase or the Mm. romantic phase, whatever you want to call it, where you see that person as perfect and you guys become one. And then in this power struggle phase, you, from my understanding of it, <laughs> the the what happens is that I win. Yeah, it's that's how that it works. then I I win the power. No, uh, that you're almost trying to find nature. It's nature's way of you finding your own personality and balance inside the relationship. You're not one. Your own independence exactly. within a unit. Um, you start seeing all their flaws and Ooh. or on purpose start triggering them and um, like provoking them. Yeah, so see. that you can be like, they're not perfect. See, and, and you're separating from them a little bit because you want to, to balance out the power. And from like my understanding, when you first hear power s- struggle, you think you're in a power struggle with each other. But for me, it was more like a power struggle with yourself like understanding that you're doing this inside a relationship and just trying to stir up shit so that you don't entirely lose yourself or lose yeah, your identity in exactly. the relationship. Yeah, and once we kind of realized that that's what was happening, that we were having just stupid fights, mm-hmm. we were able to communicate through it. You know, just to be like, "Oh, I'm feeling vulnerable or scared or this is, you know, in this situation, I'm feeling triggered because um it's that moment in the relationship where you're like, I need to give up time, whether it's in my career or with my friendships, to support him or h- him with me. I'm giving you so much, yeah. and I have to make sure this is worth it. Exactly. And, that, and for me, that was my thing, but everybody has their own triggers, whether mm. it's you know from a past relationship or whatever it is. That I, I think about it all the time because I'm fascinated in that moment in the relationship where you're completely enamored with someone, you're obsessed with them, and then you're just like, the fucking cup? Yeah. You're just going to leave the fucking cup on the table? It, it is. You're not gonna just the cup. That cup again. It's the like, weirdest it's fight. Not about the cup. Yeah, you're like, why are we <laughs> arguing about this cup? This is crazy. It's obviously just about me yeah. trying to test you to make sure yeah. all these sacrifices I'm making are worth it, or and just coming out of this like uh, this daze that you're like, this is the perfect human, and then you're like, he's not perfect because he put the fucking cup here. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have never done that. I would never. Straw? Are you a psychopath? <laughs> I know. I found myself doing that in relationships, but I think that that often happens when it's kind of, for lack of a bird, better bird, for lack of the bird, <laughs> for lack of a better word, it's the one, and you're kind of, I think, all this scared. New- scared fear starts coming in and this is now the father of your future child yeah and so i know in relationships that you know it's going great and then all of a sudden i'll be like so you're just not gonna wear the headphones on the podcast so when we have kids you're just not gonna I'm put like, the seatbelt on no i <laughs> <laughs> but you know yeah. what I mean? so it's like you're not gonna wear your seatbelt what happens when we have a kid you're not gonna yep. wear a seatbelt like everything becomes such a bigger thing well and and the fact is like 
and we talked about this all the time, they have so much power, really, because mm. you just gave your heart to them. <sighs> and so you trying to fight for your power back isn't going to happen because you were totally vulnerable and gave them your heart. And, and now you realize, wow, I'm in a situation where I could be severely hurt. And that's going to that's gonna fuck up my day, you know? Like The it, power struggle, oddly, is you're powerless and you have to yeah, just cope with the exactly. fact that this person could level you at any moment. Exactly, and you just have to be vulnerable with each other and trust each other. And trust is so hard. Oh my gosh, it's so, it's so real. Yeah. But also there's this thing where you're like, it's too late. Like the and the power struggle, you're it's like, it's too late. too late. What are we doing? You're like, no matter you're what. You're addicted to me. I'm yeah. addicted to you. I'm going to be hurt. So might as well just give over the trust. I think it's trying to control the way we get yeah. hurt or something. Mm-hmm. So let me just start this shit. Yeah. yeah. And then so now you got you don't have that anymore. You're just like, whatever. No, yeah. We definitely worked through that. <laughs> Anyway, so fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely worked through that, and uh, but it was a real. How did you find out about that? Was it a book or something? Um, we just started. We got in a, a big fight over uh-huh. nothing, and then we're like, "What are we doing? <laughs> we're so dumb. Well, why are we arguing? Way, about I'm so slender? tired. Yeah, I'm so why are we so, fighting? Why are we crying? <laughs> um, and then yeah, and so then we started like researching it mm-hmm. and being more aware, and we were just. Um, you know, worked on our communication, mm-hmm. worked on, like, letting the per- the other person know mm-hmm. when we were feeling that, when we were feeling vulnerable or whatever that was. And then... But I'm also laughing because I know you well enough to know. I do feel like it... It's very hard for you if you're annoyed to hide it. Oh, like, I can't. I, you, I'm like a glass house. You really are <laughs> because, like, so many of these little micro fights and relationships just come from, like, yeah, sure. Yeah. And then that's a two-day fight. Like you, your eyes are so expressive. Like I've just seen you in situations where you're just like, like I, I can't. I don't even. I can't get out of my own way. <laughs> the listeners probably can't see what I'm doing, but you can say so much with just like. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's really hard for you to get around that. I think so many of our little fights that we have are just from little shit like that. Yeah, that's why I'm just like, I know that about myself, and <laughs> I'm just so direct and so honest. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm super annoyed, but that's okay. Or like a lot of times. You know, being long distance, we just have really bad FOMO. Oh, God, like, yeah. oh, my God, he's having so much fun without me yeah. at this awesome dinner that I would be at. Yeah. And we just call it out. We're like... I, want, I wish I was there. I wish I was there, and I'm probably not going to be supportive about your awesome time you're about to have. Yeah. So just go yeah. and have fun. I'm going to be know. passive aggressive for yeah. the next couple hours. But yeah. It, but it's just because I love it's you. It's just because <laughs> I want to be there with you. This is what love is. Yeah. Just sort of is... Um, I love long distance. Um... What are your, like, how do you manage it? Is there, like, a daily schedule of, like, we have to talk every day, we have to FaceTime every day? No, because, I mean, when you're in different time zones, that's just impossible. Yeah. We just are aware that if we don't talk consistently for, let's say, I don't even know, the like, five days, we start bickering. We Shit get, starts, yep. You start missing each other. Yep. And, um, and then we just you know, carve out that time or just are aware and again, just call it out. Yeah. I just miss you. Yeah. And I'm being Fuck you. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I mad. Miss you. I miss you. Dickhead. I'm mad. <laughs> I want a new skill. I want you to have more skills too. I'm gonna get one with Skillshare. Skillshare. How do you feel about that? You need to explore some new skills deep in your existing passion. Get take some online classes. What Skillshare class are you going to take? I want to take painting. I want to get lost in creativity. I want you to paint me. I will paint you. I'll paint you like a French paint, girl. Paint me like one of your French girls. I want you to do a portrait of me and all the dogs. Naked? Yeah. Okay, good. I need to learn how to paint nipples. So this will be great. <laughs> I want to learn. Um, I saw a girl on Instagram who made a sweater out of her dog's hair. Mm, hate her. I wonder if Skillshare <laughs> has a class for that. Probably not. It's an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Thousands of inspiring classes, probably not the dog hair one. <laughs> That's inspiring. <laughs> for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. It's very affordable, especially when you compare it to pricey in-person classes. Annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Skillshare 
Skillshare is a proud sponsor of Good For You. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash Good For You. Get two free months of premium membership. That's two whole months of unlimited access to thousands of classes, not the dog hair one, for free. <laughs> Get started and join today by heading to Skillshare.com slash Good For You. Skillshare.com slash Good For You. Tired of feeling self-conscious in photos? Why not make this the year to straighten out them teeth? Ugh, I thought it was going to be spine. No. <laughs> <laughs> with Candid delivers clear aligners directly and straightens your teeth so that you're not running around looking like a jack o' lantern. Yeah, looking like Pennywise out there in your <laughs> Tinder profile pictures. Get out the gutter. This is a way to straighten your teeth, but it's 65% less than braces. Unlike braces, Candid Clear aligners are comfortable, removable, and totally invisible, unlike the clear braces I got when I was 10 that didn't work at all. I wear mine around just because they're a sponsor. <laughs> you, you have clear aligners? They just say hashtag ad on them. Just on them like your grill. <laughs> Unlike other companies, Candid only works with orthodontists, never general random ass dentists off the street. That means your treatment will be designed by an expert in tooth movement with 20 years of experience on average. So are you ready to take the next step towards straighter teeth? For a limited time, you can get started with 70 Five dollars off by using the code Whitney at candidco.com slash Whitney. That's candidco.com slash Whitney. Use the code Whitney for $75 off. Get those street in order. Those street. <laughs> those get those teeth off the street. Get those back roads in order. <laughs> Candidco.com slash Whitney code Whitney. I remember when you were planning your wedding, that was really <gasps> exhausting for you. You know I hate wedding planning. Well, that I mean, some people know this already that I'm I'm not engaged at the moment because it was it was truly so hard for me. I I it comes really easy to a lot of people. I'm just not good with a lot of little decisions, and I had a really hard time with um, who do I invite, who do I not. I don't want to hurt this person. Oh my feelings. god, yeah. And then everyone everyone's advice to you is like, it's your wedding, do whatever you want. You're like, no, but after the wedding, I'm going to have to face that friend and I don't want to lose friends over this. And this just turned into another $50,000. If I invite this person, I have to invite everyone from high school. Uh, if I invite this yeah. person from college, everyone's going to know. With social media has now made it so you cannot have a 50-person wedding. And it's like, it also depends on like w what number you are in the family of getting married like if you're one of the first in your family of getting married like everyone assumes everyone's invited everyone assumes that everybody gets a plus one. Oh gosh and you're just like like for my sister that's how it was for her and and just so many people were mad at her where i was like way down the list of cousins getting married so everyone was more forgiving they're like yep she can't she can't invite everyone it's fine your sister kind of took the bullet on yeah that what was your um, rule on plus ones? Uh, it was, yeah, no ring, no bring. Oh, or, <laughs> savage. You, and you do get like that because near the end, you're like, I don't want to be dealing with this list. You just yeah. start like sharpening out people. Or if, <laughs> if, if Justin and I hung out with them as a couple, a, a lot, a Good lot. Rule. Good rule. Then they were invited. A friend of mine uh, did one in Italy also. That was, you have to have met the parents, been on a trip together, and said, I love you. Uh, I'm like, so do you ask? <laughs> <laughs> so are you like calling your friend? You're like, so did you? Did, I, it's did a lot. They meet it's the a parents? lot. What, where was the trip? How far away was it? And, How many days? And then they're just like, love you. Okay. Yeah. Can we go again? <laughs> A lot of people like, say I love you that have known each other for three weeks, so that might not be a very good... And also, people, st like, you lose friends over the wedding because you see, like, nasty sides of people. You do! Where suddenly they're like... anything crazy? Yeah, they're like, oh, um, you know, I just started dating this girl for two weeks, but... And I'm going through a divorce, but, like, my dad got cancer, so... And she helped me through it, so she deserves to go. And you're like... I don't know this girl. I don't want to know anything about that right now. It has nothing to do with my wedding. And yeah. like you were barely invited. <laughs> we were pushing it. But also, yeah, it's like w w it is wild because I found that when I started the process, everyone puts their stuff on you. Oh, yeah, everyone. Everyone puts their stuff. And that's ultimately why I depressed pause. It was like, you know, I have like lots of like sick family members and people I haven't talked to. And it was like, I haven't seen you in so long. You know, like I have to, this is such a big deal. We're going to be flying out. And you're just like, oh no, I wasn't even going to invite you. Literally. You're like, who? And then people that you are like kind of, um, 
like like ancillary friends will ask you lots of questions about the wedding and you're like well if you're asking me now i have to invite you they start sending you venue ideas and you're like oh well and the closer it gets to the date, the more guilty you feel. Ugh. Like you go through all of these different phases where you're like savage, you know, marking out people, and then suddenly you're like, I've talked too much about my wedding to this person. Like I have, you have to, to invite, invite them. them. So then you invite them. Or they keep asking. Stop yeah. asking. Stop asking. Stop trying to get yourself invited. Also, weddings suck. <laughs> Why do you want to go? <laughs> I do find, though, that for a lot of people that have been married for a while, like, weddings are their fun thing to do, you, yeah. where they, you know, can leave their kids with a sitter, and I'm like, oh, you need this way more than I do. Yeah, and also I learned that Justin was zero help in the wedding planning process because he works all summer long. Yeah. He never goes to weddings. He had no idea what goes into a wedding. That's He's so like, funny. why can't we invite my entire team, all of their spouses, and then every single person? Like, what do you mean there's a limit of people we can have? You're like, okay, never mind. You're not allowed to be involved anymore. Yeah, what are you talking about? I mean, how many people would that be? I I mean, I, I, team to me, alone To me, there's 80. like a thousand people on a baseball team. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea how baseball works. There's so many people on the field. I it's, get so confused. It's, it's, and it's just totally different from a party, and you just assume it's like a party. I don't know. No, it's there's so many logistics involved. Did you have any friends that you feel like you kind of lost in the process? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, because you really you really see who they are. And, and you see at the ceremony, I've seen so many friendships dissolve because of someone's behavior at the ceremony when you're like, oh, you just couldn't not make this night about you. Like, yeah. You just couldn't. You- yeah. I feel like ultimately we had a great group of people that did come. Once they got there, yeah. And that's the great thing about... Well, I wasn't there, so it couldn't have been that good, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> you were invited, though. I was invited, <laughs> and I couldn't come because I've like... No, it was a whole I was thing. touring. It was like a whole... Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, don't worry about it. And but yeah, it was a great the vows renewal. And like that was ultimately the final straw was like when I look around, I don't want to see people that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to introduce myself at my own wedding. Yeah. And that's kind of where the line was. I don't want to introduce myself at my own wedding. That's such a good one. Yeah. I got a text once from a friend of mine who's like, we had like a, a monthly game night. I'd see him like once a month. We didn't really talk outside of that game night, but we were really like good friends. And I got a text from him one day. And he was like, hey, you're such a good friend. I love you. Just want you to know it's going to be a small wedding. I can't invite everyone. And I just wanted you to hear it first. I love it. It was such a great text. I was just like, made me like him more. I mean, I'm relieved when I'm not. <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh, great. I was like, thank you. <laughs> oh, God, thank you. <laughs> Woo. I'm like, Woo, I'll and buy you a gift just as a thank you. I thought that was such a classy way to yeah. handle it. And he told me later that he made a list of all the people he couldn't invite and just sent them that text. And he said that it was like 90% success rate of people not getting shitty about it. Uh, and but it kills me. You're like, 10% were shitty. Uh, yeah, 10% were shitty. Sure. And he, he's like, I'm just trying to do the right thing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But then I also had a cousin who, <laughs> who like only <laughs> invited to the rehearsal dinner like one cousin everyone was invited to the cer- ceremony everyone flew in and then only invited my brother to his rehearsal dinner and you're no. like just don't invite my brother yeah, yeah yeah like just make clear lines clear lines because then everyone's like i didn't even want to go to your rehearsal dinner but now i'm just mad that i'm even here that you i even get, flew in what was your favorite wedding gift you got i hate buying wedding gifts because i never know if i'm doing well like okay. what's a good one what's the best wedding gift Ugh, you got i got well, I, I put it on my registry. I got a Roomba that I just love. <laughs> Are you serious? I just love it. <laughs> Why am I laughing like Rodney Dangerfield? <laughs> Did you already give me your emphysema or whatever? Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Kate came and she's like, I'm sick. Yeah. Um, uh, that's so funny. You have a Roomba zooming around your house. Oh, love it. And then I returned some of the gifts people got me and bought another Roomba. Two <laughs> Roomba. <laughs> you know, we got a dog. We all had a I, dog hair. That's such a... God, I'm constantly... I have a sciatica from cleaning up dog hair oh, yeah. all day. I put one in my living room, one in my bedroom. Now I'm going to get one for the baby's room. Do they know when to just go? You, it's all on an app. You just click it and it goes. Does your dog chase it? No, I just told him not to. You know, he's so good. Harley's yeah, I so. know. I know. I know. I'm like, don't know. We're going to get to like, Harley. In okay. A I know. He's like a little human. Um, but uh, you know what's so weird? I, I was trying to write a joke about this in my last special is that when 
a Roomba gets stuck under a couch, you know, when it gets stuck and it's trying to yeah. go, I feel bad for it. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That I is get, so weird. I, I get like emotionally attached to them because they like, because when you see them get stuck, you're like, oh, buddy. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, Get Come it. on, <laughs> please! Suck, suck, suck. <laughs> I don't have you for nothing. What do you mean I have to walk over there and I, uh, get you out of there? I would never think of getting someone a Roomba. Oh, love it! That's so funny. It love just it. like says someone going like, "You're lazy." Yeah, literally. You're a terrible I'm like, wife. I am. <laughs> But we know. I forgot about Roombas. I didn't realize they were still happening. Oh, yeah. And then now the new ones, they go back to their little pod and they empty themselves and then go back to the exact spot they left See, out. See, that creeps me out. That's like some Black Mirror Don't shit. you have a robot? Like, I why does that creep you out? <laughs> I, don't I don't know why. If it has, like, eyeballs and looks like me, I'm fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> if it's in my spitting image, I'm totally okay with it. Obviously, it's the best. And then, so, was your pregnancy planned? Oh, uh, <laughs> is that something we're allowed to say? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, greatest well, gift of life. Though. You know what's weird? I, I have like a couple weird skills. I'm not good at a lot of things. The guys in this room know. I'm I'm very bad at a lot of things, but when I'm good at something, I'm really good at it. And something I'm weirdly good at is guessing names, baby names. I know. <laughs> By the way, I keep moving in this chair. I know you're not even on camera. I'm like, you've rolled out. <laughs> That's why I, I hate this chair. Like you're on a swivel. I hate this chair. Are you doing ab work? I don't, what are you I don't know. I just, I think I want like a higher Look whatever. I'm over there modeling. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I know. Um, uh, I'm weirdly good at guessing baby yep. names. I didn't guess the exact name of your baby. No, but I guessed my guess. You guessed basically the nickname yes i I, my guess was gonna was i think it was like viviana or something i was like i feel like you're gonna name your baby viviana and you were like Uh, is viviana even a name (laughs) like vivian (laughs) no (laughs) you were like i remember your face getting like really serious yeah because our her she's genevieve and her nickname's vivi yeah it was very close yeah 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 that's right because i was like vivi vivi Mm -hmm. i think vivian was my guess or something in that area no, it was Viviana, I apparently. <laughs> and then what were... You don't have to tell me, but who did I ask this? I think... Uh, I don't remember who I asked this. Was it Bill Burr? I think it was Burr. That What were your runner-up names? Um, I'm obsessed with naming things. Yeah. Unless you're going to use them for... A- no, no, no. We liked Vivian. We talked about Vivian. And then we talked about... Um, I don't know what we talked about. I don't even remember. <laughs> you really? We need to get you some ginkgo biloba pills or something. <laughs> After you have a baby, you forget a lot. Did you find that your memory is going when you got pregnant? No, literally. I used to have the best memory, and now I'm like oh, on the struggle bus. They, and it's a terrible. They feel. start eating your brain. I think they yeah. start taking brain cells. From and your brain. Justin has a terrible memory, so he's like, "This is how I've always felt." <laughs> you two just walking around having no. Yeah, concepts. we're like, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> um, did you have an easy pregnancy or a hard one? You know what? I think overall I have no complaints, but I have every complaint. Like yeah. being pregnant is hard. It's oh, yeah. hard to get Sounds around. Like a nightmare. Yeah, it's just I, I can't even wear it, I can't even carry luggage in the airport. You I mean you are a passenger yeah. on this ride. Your body has taken over and it's really awesome but you have like no control like even walking a couple blocks late in my pregnancy i was like swollen and everything hurt it's just it's wild yeah but you have like some kind of like endorphins get you through it i think well, i mean you're just kind of stuck so yeah. was, just, was that the child birth process painful i mean that's a crazy question i know but um some women are like i loved it i want to do it again <laughs> Like, I'm addicted to it. It felt so good. Found my purpose. And you're like, what? Mm, no, you, you I, had I didn't an epidural. That. That's why. I yeah, I definitely had an epidural, but I also had, I had a great birth. I did. You Do you know, any photos? Photos? <laughs> it was just fast. Oh, good. Yeah, it was very fast. And then did you just, you knew, and another thing I think they don't tell a lot of people, friends of mine recently that have been pregnant, like, they don't tell you that not everyone's water breaks. Yeah. In movies, you learn that like you should- Also, they don't tell you that when your water breaks, it can be hours. Hours and hours. It doesn't come out right after the water breaks. That's just the start of it. Ah. Also, they don't tell you it's not nine months, it's ten months. Oh. Oh yeah. And then everyone's like, <laughs> yeah. what are you, eight months? You're like, nine. <laughs> nine. <I'm> so tired. <laughs> and so did you like right away know? Because you're so, you're such a clear person and you'd play 
like you're so like decisive did you just like no no what that like I, you're like i'm it's go time no okay so i did not know and my mom and my sister both had similar birth experiences and i don't know why i didn't believe them <laughs> but like we have this apparently like in our genetics this thing where we don't feel the contractions until like eight centimeters dilated so my mom all four pregnancies she didn't get an epidural because it was too late back then. Oh, God. I had, like, the most amazing <laughs> doctor, and she's like, I don't care. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Shit-faced. <laughs> yeah, and, um, but, yeah, so I, like, I felt the contractions, but I was like, is, there, is that a contraction? So they... Oh, what does it feel like? Just, like... Pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just pressure. Yeah. I just feel like, and also a lot of my friends who are like, I've been in so much pain all my life just being a woman that childbirth, I like, I was like, is that cramps? Is that a back pain? Also, it's a migraine. It's like yeah. we're always in some kind of pain. And then right before childbirth, everybody talks about like, I don't want to poop in front of my husband. And I want to be like, pooping is the most normal thing to do. Like <laughs> the fact that a baby is coming out of you is that's, that's the thing that's not normal to see. You know, I, I love to talk about poop. <laughs> So I'm like, who cares if I poop? I'm birthing a child. Let my body do what she needs to do. <laughs> yeah, that's the least. There's also blood and skin tearing. Yeah. It's like a friend of mine. Yeah, a friend of mine tore real bad. Oh, a friend of mine too. Oh, gosh. They don't tell you about that, do they? No, but you know. If they did, if people talked about that, no one, like our species would go extinct. No one would continue on. But no one really talks about breastfeeding after that's the hardest thing to no do in the enti- entire world everyone thinks oh it's so natural like it's the most natural thing to do it's impossible yeah it's really it's hard for so people. hard to fit the baby's figuring out the nipple you're figuring out the nipple you're so tired you're shamed if you can't do it right yeah, you're shamed if you put up like boundaries and then there's this whole thing of like you never know if you're giving the baby enough food or with mm-hmm. a bottle, you know exactly how much food the baby's yeah. taking. So then you're always in the mom shame. You're like, am I feeding the baby okay? Am I feeding him too much? Yeah. Not enough. And so I feel like breastfeeding really covered up the birth experience. I'm like, I, I do the birth experience again, but breastfeeding needs to be talked about. That is so hard and it's not natural and it takes like take 17 classes before. That's so interesting. So there's a breastfeeding class because a friend of mine, she had to get a lactation consultant. Yes. Yeah. No, get... Th- Definitely get those because she could not do it. And I think getting so embarrassed and ashamed that you can't started stressing her out so much Well, because the baby's screaming and all you want to do is feed this yeah. beautiful baby you yeah. just created and you don't know how and the baby doesn't know how and it hurts and you're bleeding and it's it's chapped. It's purple. Why do not pe- people not talk about this more? I don't know. I think it's too real. Can people we like, <laughs> can we look up how what percentage of women struggle with uh, lactation? Or breastfeeding. Yeah. And I think there's this ridiculous thing where, like, you have to breastfeed. It's the it's the eye contact. People don't understand. It's the eye contact that they get from breastfeeding that's important, which you can also do with a bottle. You can do with formula. Well, yeah, and I think that's the thing, too, is, like, breastfeeding didn't give me the bond with my baby. Mm-hmm. Like, she's my baby. Yeah. I, could, I could have not carried her, not breastfed her, and I'd still love her more than anything in the world. Yeah. Like, breastfeeding her didn't make me love her more. Yeah. It was impossible to love her more. Right. Oh, that's... But, so... yeah. I mean, the sc- her screaming at me while breastfeeding, that was tough. That's traumatizing. Yeah. And what did you do? Um, you know, I got real stubborn. Uh-huh. Because then everyone around me was like, you know, they were trying to be supportive and being like, you know, Well, because everyone's to. got so much advice. So much advice. When you're a new mom. And you uh, can't even, like, lock into your own instincts, which are all there. Yeah. Because everyone's giving you advice. Yeah, that I kind of I kind of left my body because I was like I got to figure this out. I have to I have to figure it out. And then I also was like in the shame where I was like some women can't even produce milk. I have so much milk. I could literally feed a village. <laughs> <laughs> like I should use this cartons milk. of milk. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, they were built for function too, <laughs> guys. They work. Um, but I think it's we all thought for the longest time like that baby's gonna eat well. Yeah, that's yeah. always what I thought of when I looked at you. But it, really, breast size has nothing to do with breastfeeding, and a lot of women go in like already scared if they don't have, um, like large breasts or hmm. whatever. It, it has nothing to do with it. It's about your body and mm-hmm. what it's producing. That is so stressful. Then ultimately, yeah. were people helpful? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's just so hard to know how, like, yeah. even now, I'm like, I don't I don't know how to help a friend because every experience is so different. See, this is why I think you're going to, like, just continue to be, like, such a influential voice because you just say, I don't know. Yeah, it's... Uh, so many people will go, well, here's what you do, and, and this is the exact shit that causes shame and confusion in people and self-doubt is that so many people pretend that they're experts in everyone's experience. Yeah, it's... That people go, well... She said that this works for everyone and it's not working for me and I'm too embarrassed to even ask about it. Every baby is so different. Like some babies, I know my sister's uh, first child breastfed so easy. Everything mm. was easy. And it was easier to breastfeed than make a bottle Yeah, because everything just worked. And her second baby, it didn't go the same way. And yeah. she thought it would and she tried to, to fit those two experiences into the same mold. Yeah. And it didn't happen that way. And it's like you feel shame. Yeah. Like, I want to give both babies the same advantages, but ultimately, we're all doing our best. We just got to stop judging I, each my, other. My mom was drinking when she breastfed. I'm fine. Like, they're fine. They're, you know what I mean? I'm fine. I'm, I'm <laughs> fine. Look at me. <laughs> I, mean, oh, yeah. I know and i have fake boobs and i went and i was like am i gonna be able to breastfeed and they're like it's fine i was like well are you sure and they're like yes like I mean, also i'm like justin, i don't know justin was there. formula fed like he's one of the top athletes like Shouldn't, maybe there's something he, to that he should be like the face of formula yeah. <laughs> he should holy shit yeah is he, that's true and then anything that goes wrong with your child i mean okay maybe not anything all these doctors are gonna be like typing it <laughs> but like your doctor immediately recommends formula like if your baby has Anything jaundice yeah. or yeah. isn't gaining enough weight? They're yeah. like, formula. Wait, so I thought breastfeeding was the best. Now they're recommending formula. Yeah. No one knows. No, nobody, nobody knows. knows. That's the thing. Nobody knows, and every baby's different. So stop, yeah. stop pretending that yeah. you're some like stop authority judging. figure. Stop judging. Just let. Just write it out. Did you work out during your pregnancy? I saw some. Yeah, I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about you. Is you're just kind of like I do my best. Yeah, I I did, and it's like, I think the hardest thing is. Post pregnancy, I was like, I got to get right back in the gym. Yeah. I have to jump right back. It, you know, there's so much pressure to bounce back yeah. for all these women. Like, we have to be exactly what we were like as quickly as possible before. And and then the media, I feel like yeah. the media. That's the oldest thing I've ever said. <laughs> but like, some people will be like, here, here's so and so four weeks after having her baby. I know. It's like stop making that a headline. Like, it's stop. Just, and like she has nine trainers, and yeah. she always looked like this. She's 21. Just why is this a news story? Yeah, and it, again, everyone's different. Like maybe you ripped more than the other person. Maybe yeah. your hormones are more intense. Like my hormones were way more intense Whoa. breastfeeding than I it was pregnant. Huh. So I I was like more swollen, more exhausted yeah. while I was breastfeeding. It's not necessary to also add in the mm -hmm. pressure of trying to be exactly what I looked like before. Right. And it was pressure I put on myself for sure and messaging. I put on out you there. too. Yeah, you were. I was like, pull it together. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I just feel like it. it the infant phase too flies by. So yeah. just like give yourself a break. We all will get back in the gym. It doesn't doesn't um uh did I read somewhere that breastfeeding burns calories? Is that true? I don't. It didn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't for me. Yeah. And I have a whole theory that it's all lies because, <laughs> because every one of my friends who bounced back yeah. after pregnancy, they all formula fed. They I didn't love breastfeed. This. And ev all of my friends who were breastfeeding were all swollen and holding on to the extra weight because you also require more calories to breastfeed. Oh, see, I, see, there's a lot of the shit that doesn't add up for me. And I don't like I don't like any of these um, pseudoscience sort of like arrogant theories like um yeah the, the broad generalizations you're and like, come these on. shaming women about like not using you know meds to give birth or having a home birth like i talked to a pediatric anesthesiologist who was like half of the horrible things we see in the er with babies are from home births like this is not a game also like, can you imagine the cleanup on a home birth <laughs> <laughs> you're like no you got your Roomba. you said <laughs> Send your Roomba out. Get that placenta Roomba. You gotta... I'm like, who's doing the cleanup? Like, it's, <laughs> not me. It's just like there's this thing now where you can't just go to a doctor and use the yeah. the latest technology. Everyone wants to go back to being Amish. I mean, it's <laughs> whoo. I, there's definitely like there's trust that's been lost in all Medicine. authority. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there are bad doctors. I again had the 
the best doctor, <laughs> all women team. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Everyone was like, who cares? No fat shaming because there's doctors who fat shame you too. But there's also doctors who, when I froze my eggs, they say, and this is, I know this is true and I, I'm actually split on this, but they're like, well, because yours would be a geriatric pregnancy. A, any pregnancy over 35, yeah, five. I think is geriatric, which is, I'm just. And gonna, you're high risk immediately. Yes. And which that's them doing their job and the science does back up that is. Yeah, you, but uh, you, you know, a term. I'm just like, can we get a synonym in there for that? Yeah. How about just like a, 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 a career woman pregnancy? <laughs> career woman. Something like someone who, you know, a, a woman with a 401k pregnancy. I work. <laughs> you know, that's why there's a little delay. All right, guys. I know a lot of podcasters, they're out there shilling a bunch of products that they don't really use. They're out there saying they use products. They're full of shit. I'm not. Look at this. I'm wearing my MeUndies right now. Look. Look at you. Now what? Now what, Dalia? Now what, Rogan? You really wear me on these? I just proved it. And if you're not watching on YouTube, you probably have no idea what just happened. I showed my me undies to everyone. Show them I really use these. I'm not a, a shill. Yeah, call them out. Drag them, sis. <laughs> these are the best underwear, I swear to God. You got the them. The best. You got them for me. Well, you got me some non undies first. And I went to the mall for them. I went you to got the me, store. He got me these granny panties that looked like a, a, a biking right. shorts. They were full coverage. They were. They looked like a bandage. It was awful. And then the undies, they're so soft that they um they feel like skin. They feel they're like. They're the best underwear. I, I've I, had them for years. I get what Hannibal Lecter was talking about. I get it. He would love these. They're, I love mine. They're very soft. They're very smooth. Sometimes I forget I'm wearing them. I almost peed right through them the other day. <laughs> I love me undies. I'm a big fan. Me right. too. I wear mine everywhere. I wear mine in, all throughout my apartment. People don't like it. <laughs> I do it anyways. I go door to door. Everyone in your in your uh, apartment complex. Yeah. Has, which ones do you wear? Uh, I wear the I wear the little bikinis and classic. Oh, excuse me. me. I wear a panty. <laughs> I wear a full panty. <laughs> I bet your undies might be smaller than my me undies. There's a great offer for my listeners. Any first time purchases, you're going to get 15% off and free shipping. This is a no brainer, especially because they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. I'm wearing them right now, right this minute. You satisfied? I'm very satisfied. There you go. Don't feel a thing. Uh, get your 15% off your first pair. Free shipping, 100% satisfaction guarantee. Meundies.com slash Whitney. Meundies.com Whitney. Today, ticks. They figured it out. Finally, a freaking company made it so you can buy tickets to shows, plays, music without getting scalped or scalper. Wait, no, scalpers, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you got it all in one With place. All in one place. Okay. It's just such a better way to buy tickets. They've got just the best prices on shows all in one place. You just get the app or go to todayticks.com. I'm on the site right now. It's all just right here. Yeah, that's what I want. I want to be able to get my tickets to Hairspray, Christina Aguilera, and wrestling all in one place. Wrestling? Wrestling. Are you, do you like, do you enjoy the wrestling? If I can get a ticket for it, I sure will. (laughs) Make it easy and I'll go. I want to go see Rent. I want to see when Rent's in town. 525,600 minutes. Anywhere you live, it's not just Broadway, not just London's West End, tickets everywhere, Chicago, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, Sydney, more, todayticks.com. Finally see that show you've been wanting to see forever, Benton, Chippendales, or discover something new that you'll love just as much. Go to todayticks.com slash Whitney. You'll use promo code Whitney to get $10 off your first Today Ticks purchase. You're welcome. Promo code Whitney, todayticks, T I X dot com slash Whitney for ten dollars off your first ticket purchase. Go see Wicked. Live your life. Today ticks dot com slash Whitney. Celine Dion, here we come. But I just feel like there's so many fake rules that are just now making uh people feel shame. Yeah. About, I agree. About what happens. You and, know? Yeah. And as soon as you lose trust in one area, you lose trust in the whole thing and also i think this is a, a, maybe a weird thing to say but if your doctor if you're if your doctor's not communicating with you or not just get a new one like get a new one. Oh my god that's what i said yeah i say to everyone like if you don't if you don't feel right get a new doctor i think a lot of us think like but if you're at the, with you one, have 10 months yeah you have 10 months <laughs> they can just fax i guess they're not faxing anymore they, i was just wow the, i was just at the dog vet for five they can carry your pigeon your scrolls yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. over, over to the ye old hospital. Yeah. No, I was just, I think that for me, I, I was going, th- this is obviously a very different situation. I'm one of those people that is going to uh, have someone talk about their baby and then I'm going to talk about my dog. Um, I think it's I, similar. Yeah, I, it, 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 um, I actually argue sometimes dogs are harder because they can't talk to you. They can't tell you well, what's babies wrong. Can't either. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> my, my, ba- my baby can. My baby will be able to. <laughs> Not very. I guess yours is stunted. Um, and uh, and I, it was so weird for me because I was switching vets, mm-hmm. and I it was so hard for me to do because I was like, well, there's so many documents. Like how? Are, and they just like, yeah, we got them. They just, yeah, they emailed them over. It's the same thing. Like it was just such a weird thing to. I was just so afraid of something falling through the cracks. Yeah. And also, I feel like they redo everything. They don't trust the other vet. That's so true. They're like, I nope. I I don't know if they did any of this right. I got to redo the ultrasound. I got to redo this. So true. Yeah. It was so funny because I was like, yeah, I just came from this place. And I'm like, oh god, let's just do this over. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so funny to watch vets like, 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 just like throw shade at each other was just very validating. Um, I love uh, you and your dog. Oh, this is actually another reason that I felt like. Um, I was like, yes, she's worth being friends with, <laughs> making time for. I didn't know I was in a friend interview. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, no, you were. It was touch and go there for a minute. <laughs> and uh, I have a lot of boxes you have to check. Yeah. Life is, you know, it's. I think that it's hard, you know. Like, I, I didn't have, a, you know, a lot of sisters growing up, and I mm-hmm. wanted so badly to have a lot of girlfriends. But sometimes you just let people... F- in too soon without vetting yeah. I, have, I we were in the power struggle phase <laughs> I just didn't know oh, you're true. like I, I came in you're like she's the worst her and her fucking cup it never <laughs> ends with her and uh, and I have made the mistake of, of getting too close to people before I really knew, yeah. knew their character mm-hmm. and uh, and I think it's hard to make new old friends yeah as you get older you know and we have less time and uh and but one thing that it sort of like pushed you to the front of the line is you're a dog person and a horse person. Oh yeah. And dog and horse people are you horse people especially I always say that if you can it doesn't have to cost you money you don't have to own a horse you don't have to lease a horse um some kind of like volunteer situation with horses is so good for especially young women because it teaches you about being a good leader yeah your presence you have to be decisive you have to be in charge of your body you have to have strong boundaries Mm -hmm. you have to be very clear and you have to protect yourself because these can be dangerous animals um, they also take your lead. So you need to feel secure so they feel secure. That's because right. if you're scared, they don't realize you're scared of them. They think, oh my God, we're in danger. That's right. So you need to make them feel safe. That's right. So yep. you're, at a very young age, you're caring about the energy you're putting off. That's right. Because they're prey animals mm-hmm. and any kind of self-doubt, insecurity, yeah. needing their approval, needing something from them. They they only know fear and not fear. Yep. They don't know I'm worried I won't get this photo for my Instagram. They don't know. That. Yeah. And I also feel like dogs, they want to please you more. Mm-hmm. Horses, they're like, I don't want her energy. Get away from me. That's right. They don't need it because they're they graze. They don't need yeah. dogs need food from you, right? So they need yeah. something from you. Whereas horses, they have grass. Like they their reward is your tranquility. It's yeah. not a treat necessarily. That's why you don't hear a lot of people being like, That's a bad horse, they had a bad owner. Nope. The horse is just they have their own personality and they've separated maybe yes. and pulled back from yeah. humans because they had a bad owner. Yeah. But they're not changing their personalities. That's please. so true. And they're very forgiving. Um, and for the most part, very in the moment. So if you were a mess yesterday, you kind of get to start fresh with them today, which yep. is sort of cool about horses. But, um, uh, you know, I think so few people understand how much there is to learn from horses about your ego, mm-hmm. about your uh, presence. You know, I think horses really teach you how to be regal. And you're essentially auditioning to be the lead mare. Yeah. The horse that they trust and look to to make good decisions. But ultimately, you're asking. You can't yeah. overpower a horse. You'll never win. You'll never win. So you're asking for them to trust you. Yes. You have to meet halfway. And um, yeah, I think that it teaches you how to deal with people. It really helps with where you're coming from, knowing where you're coming from. And it teaches you how to earn respect. Yes. You know, and I think that a lot of people demand respect feel entitled to respect and horses are a great way to practice just earning it and Mm -hmm. earning trust over time because you can't force someone to respect you and that is kind of one of the biggest lessons i've i've learned in life you can't force someone or convince someone to respect you your behavior just has to it's also 
hard work. Mucking stalls multiple That's right. times a day, brush taking care of another living being. Mm-hmm. It's hard work. You're dirty. You're in there. And I just... I think it's important. Yeah, I think it's important. Like no one wants to hang out with someone who's like, ew. Yeah, totally. And yeah, and it's it's. I know uh, we have very strong immune systems. I never got sick as a kid because I was always in (laughs) horse shit. It's like I probably was. I I was also (laughs) disgusting. Like I would muck stalls barefoot. No boundaries. I love that. None at all. Just hookworm. <laughs> I'm um, fine. I'm healthy. But so I was kind of like, okay, this is like a horse person. Like, I know I can trust this person. I know this person is. Um, and you also have to be loyal. Like, there's just mm-hmm. so many things that come along uh, with um, whether you're volunteering, whether you have a horse, whether you, you know, do a clinic or whatever it is. I just encourage, even just watching horse videos, like, I just, you know, um, I just really encourage that for anybody that can it's um it just really builds a certain yeah. type of of person and appreciation because they're such powerful amazing animals yeah. being in front of them you feel how powerful and amazing they are and they're allowing yeah, us that's right to get on their back which is their most vulnerable place yeah, of yeah, their body yeah like that's so powerful to get that approval um and then earn that respect for them and i also think that it really Working with horses has taught me a lot about what I can and can't control and when to surrender and when not to, which has served me in so many ways in professional situations Mm -hmm. where it's like, is it worth having a conversation with this person or do I just walk away? Or is this a situation I can change or do I just shut my mouth and sit on the bench? Like the only way to win is to not play. And horses teach you, you develop that muscle of like, you know, I just walk away and let this play out or I just get off because yep. I can't control this. Like it just helps you with making really good decisions very quickly because you don't have a lot of time. Yeah, you don't have time. With horses. Yep. And I think it also teaches you to be super present because you can get hurt at any moment. And I find myself, the more I'm on my phone, the more I'm like a walking zombie. I mean, I like yeah. walk into wall. I literally will like walk into walls at this point. I'm like not paying attention. I misspell words. Like I think just being on my phone all the time has just made me sloppier. And yep. when I'm with a horse... I'm just, I feel so alert and you have to be, you know, it's just like good to get that muscle back. Yeah. And you cannot be on your phone or you will. You cannot be on your phone. You will be stepped on. It will be an accident, but I've gotten injured so many times. I mean, I have, you have to. And I think kids, I'm very pro injury. (laughs) You know what I mean? Because, you know, you sort of make better decisions, you know, like I got too comfortable with a horse one time. I still have a dent in the side of my leg and it's just was like, yeah, I was being sloppy. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, I trusted my horse too much. Yeah. And one time, you know, it was cold and he was feeling high, kicked me. Yeah. I mean, I deserved it. Well, horse, and it also helped me a lot in relationships because horses are very good at knowing, like, we can be close, but we don't need to be entrenched. Like, the healthiest relationships are the I'm ones. I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, wait. No, that, I didn't do that. <laughs> I was so obsessed with my horse. No, I would, t- like, do my homework in his stall. <laughs> no, me too. And I would go in my horse's stall, and I would, like, sleep with yeah. it. You know, that's how I am. But he sort of reminds me, like, at any moment, if I hear a, you know, bamboo or a tree or I, you know, because they're prey animals, they can hear things that are a mile away yeah. that we can't hear. They also have their different personalities. Yes. Like, I, it just, horses aren't the same. They're just like dogs in that sense. Like sometimes you might get around a mean horse and sometimes, That's right. so you have to learn their personalities and how to be around them. And respect them. Yeah. And it's the same with people. I think exactly. a lot of times we go into a relationship with a people, a, a people, with a people. Uh, with <laughs> a people. <laughs> See, phones have totally ruined my brain. <laughs> Where you go into a situation and you just, or a relationship, yeah. you're like, well, this worked in the last relationship. Exactly. And it's going to work here. You have to start new. Start new. Horses teach you like you have to like start from scratch and really get to know someone mm-hmm. before you sort of engage with them so they don't kick you in the thigh. Yep. Um, I want to talk about strong for me town for me okay so i we worked with the same trainer as you can tell she works with them way more than i do <laughs> and i am on the road so much and i think a lot of people can relate to like i want to work out i don't have a home gym i don't have a trainer right and i have 30 minutes when i land in this hotel before i have to go to this work thing like how can i best use that 30 minutes that's actually why i created strong for me because ben bruno our shared trainer yeah. and friend he used to write me workouts while i was on the road yeah. to continue living a healthy lifestyle yeah. and ultimately we talked and i wanted to give this to women that have to have access because you're right you know i do have a personal trainer i do have you know 
a nutritionist telling me what to eat. So now I'm providing that to every woman. And now, uh, you know, I partnered with Urban Remedy so you can get the food that I eat. That's what we have. That's what we eat. Really? The Urban Remedy smoothies. Yeah. yeah. That's what we eat. So that's part of Strong for me. And Oh, they, my God. Yeah. And they... You owe me like $400. Well, I've given. I, I, I'm like, no, I is, don't. Is Did you how, eat him? Is that <laughs> that's not how business works. That's why you're the business woman. And I. Um, no, yeah. So it's delivered straight to your door, and it helps you. Um, continue living that healthy lifestyle. And I think 30 minutes a day is so that you do in your house is so mm-hmm. attainable. Like yeah. having, hearing people and like for me too, be like, oh no, like you can get this body, just work out three hours a day. Like, yeah, who right. has the time? I know, I see these things and it's like a two hour workout no. and you need 50 machines. First of all, the Urban Remedies, that's so funny. That's what we, uh, the berry one and the blueberry one. I love it because I feel like if I just drink this, like I'm, I've checked the boxes for my like vitamins for the day yeah, and exactly. I don't have to, now I can kind of eat trash the rest of the day. <laughs> okay. That's not the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but, I'm not probably not doing this right, but it's just like a nice, I, I looked at the ingredients. I was just like, okay, if I just do this, like I don't have to stress out for the well, rest of the day. And you're starting the day. Right. And yeah. so if you do have, uh, I, I don't like saying cheat meal, but a meal that you enjoy that maybe is not on your health plan. Yeah. You don't feel as bad. And, that's right. and, and that's fine. I also like, we have to work on not getting into that shame spiral. Yes. Like, oh no, I had French fries. Screw the diet. Yeah. Or, or screw the healthy. Like, I'm just going to go off the edge. Like, we have to just, it's fine. It's but life. It's also, I was talking to this um, uh, nutritionist once who was just like, the stress, the uh, the neurochemicals that you're going to emit stressing out about yes. that thing uh-huh. is so much worse for you than just eating the thing. Exactly. So if you're going to produce a cortisol and adrenaline over, should I eat this thing or not? Just eat it and don't waste Because you put of- your body in, in fight or flight and so it stores food because it doesn't know when you're going to eat again. So if you're stressing yeah. out about not eating While something, you're eating, yeah. your body starts storing food. Yeah, you, you gain weight. That's what we want to talk about next with strong for me is start talking about mental health because like yeah. you said stressing out or going in those shame spirals ultimately you don't get any of the benefits yeah. i don't care if you're eating healthy all day long I'm or gonna, working out i'm allowed to say this you probably shouldn't but i am fine i know a lot of people that are working out all day and eating well and they're mentally a fucking mess no we have to address inside and out yeah health because a lot wellness. of times working out too much and eating certain ways is actually mentally unhealthy like yeah, because I, you're just you're obsessive yes yes it's the only thing you think about and and no one wants to be in that position you want like for me mm-hmm. i want health and wellness to yeah. add to my life not be my life yes i want to have the energy to be the best mom the best wife still work yeah i want to like eat to live not live to eat exactly and, and i see so many people in my life like that are doing crossfit three times a day and they have all these injuries and they're only eating like these paleo flakes or what like protein powder i'm like this is not mental yeah health. and that's what i worked on whenever i was put in that position starting modeling i only worked out to fit in a certain dress size yeah. or jean size to be the ideal body that modeling wanted me to be and now i've changed my complete mindset yeah ultimately do I fit in those jeans and dress size? Yes, but why I'm doing it is to be strong, to be my best self, and that puts me in a much healthier place to add to my life, like we're saying, and not for it to be obsessive and be my life. Yeah, I love that. I lo- and that's, I mean, that's why it's called strong for me, but yep. it's like not about being skinny, it's about being strong right. and the best version of yourself, you know? And um, and I love, I remember Ben did some for these of these two, and I want to talk about them because if you're in your hotel room and you have a chair, right? you have a chair... You have a rolled up towel, some mini shampoo bottles, (laughs) you know, what can you, the average person do? And they would go to your, uh, the, there's like, you have a bunch of workouts already. Yeah. It's a 12 week program, 30 minutes. You can do Yeah, hotel at home, whatever it is, limited equipment or no equipment. Yeah. Like a, uh, would it be called body weight workout? Um, it, I mean, yes, but no. (laughs) But like yes, you can do no, it. Yeah. You can go into a hotel room yes. with some of these workouts with no weights, no It's creating equipment. consistency yeah. and, you know, and working out smarter instead of harder. What are your favorite 3 just to do in your hotel room? Well, I think my favorites are my least favorite. Oh, that's a, such a good way to put it. Yeah, and it's the, the um, ones that suck the most. Exactly. The split squats, you know, so you put like the elevated split squats, one of your foot on the chair mm-hmm. and, and dip down. And um, fold up a little towel so that you don't get rug burn on your knee. Right. Get rug burn other ways. 
Yeah, sure. Save it for that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm like, that's a good one. You know what else yeah. I like to do? I like to do lunges down the hallway. I'm that person. Yep. I'm that dickhead. And then I'm also the person that stretches on a plane that everyone's like, ugh. Yeah, that's me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably like asleep like <laughs> while you're stretching. <laughs> um, that's a good one. Is there stuff you can do in your uh, while you're on the plane? Um, I, I mean, who would do that on the plane? I know, just a second. I'm you? like mental wellness. <laughs> you know what I used to do? I'm this- like, give yourself a break. Watch a movie. Go to sleep. Oh my god, how long is this flight? <laughs> that's mental wellness. Yeah. This is not- I used to bring those bands with me. Do you use those? Yes. Yeah. Love those bands. Right. You can kind of do them when you're sitting yeah, you down. You can do the seated, like, yeah, leg presses. Like, that's and- something you can actually pack when you travel. Yeah. I mean, sure, do it on the flight, but <laughs> it's like, I'm definitely not going you to. You know, I like doing it. Nobody talks to you. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, my God, she's insane. <laughs> no one wants to talk to the person stretching I just on a leave plane. headphones on. I usually, because I can't, even if people continue to try to talk to me, I just can't hear them. <laughs> What's like an average day? Like, what do you eat? Um, exactly. <laughs> like, Everyone listening is like, what does she eat exactly? I have to ask that. No, I mean, obviously every day it's different. I don't I don't know. Like, I'll eat, it depends on my time. I'll either start off with a smoothie yeah. or eggs. Yeah. I, I think starting off with breakfast is so important because then... So few people do that. Yeah. It's just, if I don't yeah. eat breakfast... I suddenly am starving yeah. and then I'll eat everything in yeah. my sight. And I also find that a lot of people, there's two things that I think people get tripped up on. Number one, if you're working out more, you're going to be hungrier. Right. You're going to have to eat more. And exactly. I think people try to diet and increase their workout simultaneously and that you can't do. That's why that's why Strong For Me is so great because Ben took that into consideration and also like cardio yeah. m- makes you hungrier. That's right. And so... Being smart with body weight workouts is not going to increase. It is going to increase your heart rate yeah. and so that you're burning calories throughout the day, but it's not going to be burning calories so much in just 30 minutes yeah. where you walk out and you're like, I will eat the entire cow. Yeah. <laughs> now vegans are going to attack me. <laughs> I, I, they'll come for me. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, I, uh, Ben is so funny because Ben is so... <laughs> I remember the first time... Well, it was the first time. Like, like Ben's so smart and he also... Then the reason that I recommend him so much and the reason I think um, people should go to Kate's on this is he he also specializes in really intense exercise that's not going to injure you. Yes. So I think a lot of people don't understand. Like I see people at the gym doing these crazy things and doing 30, 40 reps. And when I first started working out with Ben, we would do these like 20 pound, 20 pound weights I'd have in each hand and I'd be doing these squat lunges. Is that what they're called? Yeah. I, I don't I know. Don't, I don't even know Split what they're called. Squats, I don't Split squats. Split squats. Okay. And I would do, he'd be like, okay, do eight. And I'd be like, well, I can do 10. Like I'm so strong. And yeah. then I would do, and he's like, no, do eight. And I'd be like, but I can keep going. And he's like, there's a reason I'm picking this number. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so you don't get injured. Well, and yeah. And so that you're being smart and aren't so sore the next day where you don't work out. You can't work out again. You're creating consistency in your life. Or you're injuring yourself. Yeah. And he was basically saying, after eight, you're going to start using your back. Exactly. And I don't want you using your back. I want you using your glutes. And I just was like, well, but I, I, we all think we're so good. It's, he's like, there's a science behind this. Right. <laughs> there's a reason that the experts make the rules. And sometimes when I get in the gym, I like to make up my own rules right. based on how I'm feeling. And it's arrogant. It's just like sloppy and arrogant. And I, when I work out on my own, I'm like, you know, what? I'm just going to do 20. And like, you know, I just had one of my caffeine drinks. And then the next day I'll have my back will hurt. Exactly. I, I was working out with a friend of mine. She just started working out. And I was like, I'm going to do... 12 you should probably start at eight and she was like nope and did 12 on everything and i'm not a personal trainer so yeah. i'm not gonna like fight with her yeah i like hinted i, I was like maybe you don't want to be sore yeah the next day so sore yeah couldn't move back was killing her and then she didn't work out and with then she me. won't yeah. work out again and i was it was funny because uh when ben and i we'd work out together i would get so bored like i'm so like oh i get so bored sometimes when i'm working out um but we would take breaks and i'd be like let's just go let's just knock this out and he's like no your muscles need to recover i need you to drink yeah. this protein drink and have some water and your heart rate needs to go up and down that's right You're, yeah so it was it was so <laughs> just funny that i thought i knew what i was doing and then when i first went in with ben um, I was like, well, I don't want to build muscle. 
because that's going to make me bigger. That's going to put on weight. Like That I, kills Ben. It kills him. He literally, like, walked away from me yeah. and had to, like, collect himself. He's always, like, everyone's like, I want to look like all of your clients, but I do not want to lift weights. He's like, that's what I do. People don't understand. Lift, yeah. People are think that lifting weights, like, makes you fat. And or, you're also, like, trust me, you don't have the bill to ever look like the bodybuilder guy don't worry yeah i know people are like i don't want to look like a bodybuilder don't worry <laughs> you're like let's get you to do two push-ups yeah. and then we'll talk about that is that why you're not working out <laughs> so i think i had that misconception when i went in lifting weights does not make you bigger i think i had this misconception that running was card the only kind of cardio where you lose weight and yeah. lifting weights just made you big not true yeah not true at all. And again, Ben is so smart. His his weightlifting is specifically to not gain weight. Lean. And, and that's yeah. the other reason that you only do a certain number of reps so you don't get bulky. You yeah. get lean muscles. Exactly. And like focus on different areas. And I think there's so much information, especially with social media. There's so many yeah. trainers out there that aren't She trainers. did air quotes. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, we're on a podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll vote. Yeah. Th- that... Um, they, they're not legitimate people. Maybe they lost weight. They know yeah. how to work out for their own body type. Yeah. But now we're taking their advice. Yeah. And they don't know how to properly, yeah. you know, lift weight yeah. for everyone, for every woman's body. Yeah. And Ben is qualified. You know, he went to Columbia. Like, he's super smart. This is, like, what he does. This is what he does. And I had a broken shoulder And he's really good at helping you work out if you've had injuries and all of these are really safe. But it's it's I think people just think they can go to the gym and watch people on Instagram and just like do it. Like sometimes it's the difference of an inch. Right. And it's uh, It's the difference between building muscle and injuring yourself. Exactly. And that's why strong for me isn't, you know, it's its own brand. And I wanted to pull experts together Mm -hmm. to give reliable information to women on health and wellness true science it's not my blog what yeah. works yeah, for yeah, me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, th- that's this is, so funny this is experts coming together and telling you what works real science yeah true facts as we call them <laughs> true real facts exactly um and uh and then okay so everyone's gonna do that i also just have to ask you what you do to your skin or people are gonna lose their minds what do i do for my your skin? skin what do you put on it oh i mean Finally, I'm just silent. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, I um, I don't know. I Wash always it with so, yeah. I love Luzerne. Oh, good. Yes, yeah. that's a really good brand. Yeah, L-U-Z-E-R-N-E, not exactly. Luzerne not exactly milk. And then I love um, Tammy Fender. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Great, different hydration moisturizer. Um, yeah, drink water. Love a sheet mask. Oh, a sheet mask. The Do you have a particular one that you like? Um, I love Joanna Vargas. Oh yeah, she's really good. Yeah, I I was so hungover after <laughs> <laughs> on my way after to, I had my baby. Yeah, no, <laughs> after um after uh the Astros won the World Series and we, and my husband and I were heading to our wedding. Mm-hmm. Like obviously it was a big oh, that's celebration. Right. Did you like miss half of it? Yeah. Thank so God I, was, I didn't go. I wouldn't even seen you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was on the plane, and like Justin and I looked terrible. We both put on Joanna Vargas's sheet mask, uh, and our skin was glowing. Now I'm just like, they work, they work. Does he, where does he keep his trophy? I I don't think there is a trophy. Oh. There's a ring. There's a ring. Oh, got it. Where's, I'm like, where's... otherwise I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think I sold it on eBay by yeah. accident. Um, where does he keep his ring? Does he wear it? Um, he doesn't really wear it. Mm-hmm. Like, where would he wear it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's tricky. They give all these guys jewelry that they can't even wear. Yeah, I think it's... I don't know. I, he wears it to some... Th- I think he's worn it a couple times. Uh-huh. Are you still playing tennis? Yeah, I'll play tennis. We took a couple tennis lessons together. Yep. I, I just... <clears throat> I don't like tennis for some reason. Why? Because I'm bad at it. You know why? I don't like being bad at things. This is my problem. Is I don't like being bad at things, but in order to get good at things, you have to be bad at them for a while. And I was so inconsistent. Yeah. Tennis is so easy to because it's such a reflection of your focus. Mm -hmm. And you can have a bad day. Right? And I just get frustrated. 
because I'm full McEnroe. I'm like throwing rackets. Like I get so angry. I always find that to be my excuse though. Like, oh, oh I haven't played in so long. That's why I'm bad. It's oh. yeah. I lean in. Look at you. But I, I'm on this big kick where I just love to learn new things because it keeps it yeah. keeps things interesting. Yeah, especially with exercise. Exactly. You, you have to keep things exciting and challenge yourself. And um, I just was like, you know what? I was too much. This was like three years ago or something. I was too much at the time a perfectionist about how much of a workout something was um, and you just gotta let it go you gotta let it go and i couldn't do it's that. all about not thinking it's a workout that's why i love to learn because Ooh. i'm focused on learning this that i don't even realize i'm doing so i'm doing so much cardio this is why i didn't i never did yoga and i just kind of started doing it again because i was like this isn't i'm not getting enough of a workout i drove all the way down here i would have like expectations for how hard something would be yeah so that i could check the boxes like i i worked out and tennis like i would go to the lesson and they'd be like oh today we're only hitting i'm like but i but i need like a workout and he's like this isn't a workout you're learning a skill <laughs> And I couldn't, like, once you get good, we can start playing and that'll be a workout, but you have to get good first. No, see, I tell people that I just want to do cardio tennis, but I do have the basics. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, you're very good at it. No, I'm not very good, but I, yeah, I can hit the ball. Yeah. I'm definitely better than you. No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's not saying much. Yeah, at all. No. Um, But yeah, so I'll tell them I want cardio tennis, like, throw me a a few pointers. Yeah. But keep me moving. Yeah. And they're they're very used to that. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm not going yeah. to be serena williams yeah like i'm out here to have a good time hang out yourself. with some <laughs> hang out with these awesome people like you i i just am so competitive like i played basketball very competitively and i just it's really hard for me to just be like kind of okay at something yeah and i get i get frustrated and uh i think that's something that that working out with ben helped me because it just was like he's he would say he's like there's no reason you should be good at this yet <laughs> Yeah. You know, and I think that just... You're just, like, always trying to impress people. Yeah, what am I doing? Like, why would yeah. anyone... He'd be like, why would I expect you? I was like, well, why don't I lift this? And he's like, what is this? What are you trying to impress me? I know what you're capable of. You can't trick me. Like, I, you're paying me for this time. I'm already here. <laughs> like, you know, I think just, like, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I just, like, get in my head, and I really just want to be the best at everything. And what does that serve you? Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're just, like, super annoying. You just... <laughs> to everyone else. <laughs> No, no, when someone's the best, they're the most <laughs> annoying person. No one likes that person. I, I don't know. If you're, like, trying to compete with the best, though. Yeah. <laughs> then they're like, listen, <sighs> I will always beat you. <laughs> um, what else are we talking about? We're talking about Strong For Me. So, website, Instagram. Yep. Strong For Me. Thing. Urban Remedy. Um, anything else? Mm. What else? I don't know. What else? Our friendship. We're plugging our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> we're plugging strong for me oh and i want you to show oh you know what i wanted to ask you about i yeah. brought it up oh this thing this is do you ever use these oh yeah the ab wheel <laughs> <laughs> i love that i come on and you're like she's a fitness expert <laughs> dude this is my favorite i bring this on the road with me and you do it on the plane hey, I do-, do you do it on the plane <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I'm never playing anywhere with you. Only Southwest. That's the only time that my behavior would be the least terrible. No, I love. I wanted to ask you if it was bad for you. No, I. Um, ben has them. We do them. They're definitely not bad for you. I think the. I think the only thing is if you don't do it right and you extend too much, you can hurt your back. That's correct. Which is what I do. Oh. <laughs> But this thing, you can pack. I've packed this on trips before, and I do it in my hotel room because it's your abs and your chest and your arms. Yeah, I really like it. It's smart that you pack that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what kind of suitcase you bring. (laughs) Away luggage. They're a sponsor. (laughs) Always away. Yeah, you just put it in with all your stuff. The people at TSA look at me kind of weird. Ew, there's like dog shit on that. Well, you check, like you you bring it carry on? Sometimes. (laughs) They're like, if it's where like, are you going? <laughs> I was just, I'm going to a fitness comp, comp <laughs> in a fitness expo. <laughs> I love this app. Yeah. And I feel like people think working out has to be so complicated. Like, like push ups, dude. Yeah. People think that you Simple. have to put in an hour or you're not getting any benefit. Yes. That's not true. Just, just get in something. Yeah. And this is, um, like a very eighties invention. So I think people sleep on it, but I think this is a good tool. I literally have cobwebs on it, pretending like cut two. We have like a, like an ab wheel workout on strong for me. I'm not kidding. This is a very good thing that anyone can put in their house. It is good. It Am is I good. an ab wheel spokesperson now? Can we get me a tie-in? 
Can you call ad sales people? They send you one a hundred <laughs> ad wheels. You're like, no, I only need my one. I didn't even know it was called. It's suddenly a- in my gift bag. <laughs> Between my ad wheel and my Roomba, I feel like we are just like nailing life right now. Okay, we have to get you out of here because you have to go uh, to the west side. Is there anything else uh, you want to plug? Motherhood, just motherhood in general. <laughs> Motherhood's great. Motherhood, I it. mental health. Go to Strong for Me. Um, if we have time, we might shoot a little videos and you show us stuff. Um, I love you. Th- is this your first podcast? You ever uh, done? No. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like no. Unbelievable. <laughs> no, but this is my favorite. You're out there doing podcasts without telling me. <laughs> this is really rude. <laughs> I thought we were friends. I'm like, don't you follow me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Muted. Um, no, I, I don't know. We'll get into that. I love you. Thank you. Thank you so it's much. Kate Upton. We got Kate Upton. This Come is on. great. This was so fun. Come on. You're the best. So I was, easy. Oh, I end them very awkwardly. 